Buzzer is Harris. You ever use the name Harris? Say Harris. Nobody knows who the hell I'm talking about when I say Harris. It's true. You say Harris. They don't know who the hell I'm talking about. So I won't bother with the Harris. It's a nice name. I know a couple of people named Harris. I said, but with her, you say Harris. They say, who is that? So we say Kamala. But it's bad time. She's incompetent. Have you seen her? She goes into an interview with Oprah and she can't answer any questions. She can't answer any questions. This is bad timing for Kamala to show up today at the border. She didn't go there for four years. Now today she shows up and these numbers got released. Somebody doesn't like her, I think. And the fake news. So I don't know, maybe she's already gone, I doubt it, but she's went to the border today. She wants to see if she could salvage, make up some lies, like she said about the border bill that Trump stopped. Let me tell you, number one, I didn't stop it. The senator stopped it. But that's the worst bill ever drawn. It's a waste of paper, and she doesn't need a bill. All she has to do is fly back to Washington and get this president that we have, if he's still president. I don't even know who. Who the hell is president? Is he president? This is not, this is not exactly President Xi. He runs his country a little differently, although they do go after their political opponents pretty violently. I will say that. But they don't go after the murderers, the drug dealers. Get this guy to sign a little dot. You sign right over the little dots. And you sign your name, Joe Biden. And you say on it to Border Patrol, close the border. And they close the border. That's what I did. Our border is open. Our border is open. Nobody can believe it. And I've been saying that the people coming in. You know, I know these leaders so street smart, and I would have been worse than them because actually Venezuela still has some people in their jails. I would have had everybody out into the United States. They probably ran out of buses and planes. But they'll be, the rest of them are coming, don't worry about it. But all over the world, not just in South America, all over the world, they're coming from the Congo and Africa. A lot of people coming from the Congo and Africa. And these are serious, serious criminals coming out of jails, oh, mostly from jails. A lot of gang members, they take their gangs off the street. Like in Caracas, Venezuela, the criminals have all been brought to the United States. Their crime rate is down in Caracas. In fact, I suggest if I lose, I'll tell you what's possible, because they cheat. That's the only way we're going to lose, because they cheat. They cheat like hell. If we lose, the next time we're going to have the same group of people in Caracas, Venezuela, because it's much safer than any place in our country if she wins. Much safer. So let's go to Caracas. It was a very unsafe place. Now it's a, because in Venezuela, their crime is down 72% because they've taken their criminals, their gang members, their drug dealers, and they brought them into the United States of America, and they're also releasing almost all of their prisoners. Soon the almost will be gone. Their prisons will be empty. Their mental institutions and insane asylums will be empty. They're dumping them in our country, and I never had proof. And those fake news reporters back there, they never... They say, Trump, what would he know about that? What would he know? You know why? It's common sense. We're the party of common sense, by the way, just so you know. Common sense. So these numbers just came out. Nobody's ever seen these numbers for years. Nobody's ever seen them. And probably some patriot in ICE or somebody just did something they just said the country's going bad. You can't have a country like that. We have, think of it, murderers, convicted murderers in prison for life. Many get the electric chair or they get whatever their form of death penalty. These are convicted people for life are now in our country. And I can finally look at them and see, I say, I told you so to the fake news. 
These are hard, these are hard, tough, vicious criminals that are free to roam in our country. And now for the first time, I can say it, and you know, I mean, I knew it before, when you have open borders, but they're dumping everybody in here. I knew it before, but these numbers are actually worse than I ever thought. They should have been released far earlier so that we could have done something about it. I wish we had them three years ago, but we didn't. And now we have a problem, and you can't have her as your president. She doesn't know what the hell she's doing. She should resign in disgrace for what she's done to our country, not run for president. She was the border czar. She was the border czar. She was in I don't even care about him. What the hell? No, he, he put her in charge. Oh, she was the border czar. Now she claims she wasn't the border czar, but she was in charge of the border. Call her what you want. Four years ago, Kamala Harris inherited the most secure border in U.S. history. And as border czar, she then set the all-time record for illegal immigration into our country every single year. And many of these people were stone cold criminals and murderers. She willfully and deliberately erased her own nation's borders, a crime so wicked as to defy description. As former ICE director and a great man, Tom Homan. Anybody know Tom Homan? Tom Homan, I say, is central casting for doing what he does better than anybody. Brandon Judd, Kuwait, oh, we have great, great people. These Border Patrol guys, I got to know them all. They're great. They want to do their job. They could sit back and let it happen. They go crazy. They see what's happening to our country and they're not allowed to do the job. But as Tom Homan just said, just put it out. I've worked with six presidents. I know all about police work and I know all about policies work. I know what policies don't and don't work. President Trump was a game changer and we saved thousands of lives by securing the southern border. Biden and Harris took the most secure border in my lifetime. This is from Tom Holman and unsecured it on purpose. So he unsecured the border. They did. I don't know why they want the votes. They're dumb or they want to destroy the country. That could be the only three things. They're dumb. They want to just have people destroy our country or they want the votes. You know, they're trying to sign these people up to vote. That's the all time insult. They are working full time to sign these people, many of them murderers, to vote so they can cheat on the election because that's what they do. And they vote against bills. Any bill that wants to secure the vote, the Democrats in Congress fight like hell so they can't get passed. Who would want a bill that says bad things happen with the vote? You want to secure your vote, whether you're a Democrat. Interesting, a lot of Democrats, not the politicians, want to have that. And they don't want to have sanctuary cities, by the way. They don't want it. Only the politicians want it for certain reasons. President Trump, Tom Homan said, was the greatest president in my lifetime. Thank you, Tom. This country was never better off than when he was president. He was unprecedented in his success on the border, and it saved many lives. He was an out-of-the-box thinker, and he got the job done like nobody else could do the job. So that's from Tom Homan. Thank you. I might as well read it. I might as well tell you, because they'll never tell you that. They'll never tell you that, right? They'll never tell you that, Mike. By contrast, Kamala Harris betrayed her oath. She let our cities fail to violent gangs. She let our American sons and daughters be raped and murdered at the hands of vicious monsters. She let American communities be conquered. They're conquering your communities. You go out to Aurora in Colorado, where they're taking over with AK-47s real estate. They're in the real estate development business, just like me, except I'd never got to use guns to do it. They're taking over real estate. And Kamala turned cherished small towns into blighted refugee 
camps and you take a look at what's happening in Springfield, Ohio, and the mayor is a nice man. In fact, I think he's an independent or a Republican and he doesn't know what to do and he doesn't know what to say. He wants to be nice. 32,000 people, you have 50,000 residents, beautiful place, beautiful, nice town, no crime, no nothing. They now have 32,000 people dumped into the town and he's trying to say, we're working very hard to make it comfortable for them. No, those people have to be taken out and brought back to the country from where they came, I'm sorry. The mayor said, we're looking for interpreters. It's so hard to find interpreters because nobody speaks English, right? So we're looking for interpreters. No, no. You're looking for people that will remove them and bring them back safely to their country. It's not fair. It's not sustainable by any country. What's happening to us in the United States, millions and millions of people, 21 million plus, have been dumped into the United States, and many of them are murderers. Many of them are horrible criminals. What Kamala Harris has done is unforgivable. It's a crime, what she did. It's got, it's got to be criminal. There's no greater act of disloyalty than to extinguish the sovereignty of your own nation, and that's what she's done. She's ruined our nation. She's ruined our nation. And you know, I've always talked about this and I've talked about it strongly, but I'm just realizing as I'm talking right now and uh, not even going off a teleprompter because the teleprompter is not tough enough. I'm saying, and by the way, isn't it nice to have a president that doesn't need a teleprompter? But I've never had, thank you. Boy, what a group of people we have. It's a joke. We're laughed at all over the world for our leadership. But I, I just got this information, so I've never really spoken about this because I, this is the first time where we have these numbers with 13,000 convicted, jailed murderers, tougher than any of our criminals. We have only one good thing about this, is they make our criminals look like very nice people. These are hardened. These are hardened, horrible criminals, and we have to get them the hell out of our country because they've ruined, I mean, they're ruining the fabric of our country. Kamala is directly responsible for the tens of thousands of crimes committed by illegal migrants that she set free into our country. They didn't ask for a name. They didn't ask for a registration number. And many of them don't even have names or registration numbers. They just pour into our country. She has no idea where they're from, from parts unknown. She's responsible for every bloody crime scene, every funeral, every orphan child. And the great Mark Levin called me a little while ago and said, ask them because he couldn't believe the numbers either. He said, ask them to ask Kamala, has she ever attended one funeral of the thousands and thousands of people that they've already killed? So I ask you that question. I give that to the fake news so that they can ask that question because she's right now at the border giving a press conference. She doesn't give a press conference. She doesn't take questions. She'll make a little statement and then run away. She delivered these horrors. She unleashed these atrocities and blood is on her hands at a level that probably nobody's ever seen in this country before. But on November 5th, Kamala Harris will be held accountable for these crimes. She will be sent back to California. And we will close the border. We will stop the invasion. We will begin the largest deportation operation in American history. And we have no choice but to vote. Have no choice. We have no choice. Our country is, our country is in trouble. Like, it's a mess. It's a mess. Including the inflation.
that was caused by them by energy and by their spending, but the inflation caused by them by energy. Remember when energy went way down, the production after I — by the way, I got more votes than any sitting president in history. I was told if I got the same — the same number of votes as the first time, 63 million, you can't lose, sir. We got many millions of votes more than that. Nobody's ever gotten more votes, sitting president. And they beat us by a whisker. It's the only thing they're good at. They're good at cheating in elections. They, they're good at nothing else, believe me. They're certainly not good at policy, policy. By the way, she changed every policy. She had 15 policies that she changed. She was against fracking. She was against everything. And she changed everything because you couldn't get elected, right? And she was the last one. She was the last one online. You know, uh, whether you like Biden or not, he got 14 million votes and he won the primaries. And then they came to him, Nancy Pelosi, crazy Nancy. She came to him. She's nuts. By the way, did you see yesterday, two days ago? So I'm not much into this stuff, but Visa crashed because the government went after the government filed a big suit against Visa. Nancy and her husband sold their stock the day before it was announced. Nancy Pelosi. So why don't we get some AG somewhere like in a Republican territory? And why don't we get them to uh, do a little investigation? Sold the Visa stock. Are you listening? They're probably turning off the cameras now. They don't want to report. The day before the government announced a major investigation, the biggest there is, can't get worse, into Visa. They sold it the day before. Uh, it's amazing, isn't it, huh? I'm proud to say I think I'm the only politician that's lost. I've lost billions on it. I don't give a damn. I knew I'd lose a lot. I didn't know I was going to lose that much. I wanted to lose. I could have made a fortune. I could have been like Hunter, sell paintings for 500. Though. I would have gotten much more. I'd say, you got to give me $5 million for that painting. I haven't painted before, but I have a lot of natural talent. Now, I'm proud to say that, I mean, I'm not the only one, but I guess I'm just, I, you know, I figured I'd lose a lot, but I didn't know I was going to lose that much, but it doesn't matter to me. Uh, because this is much bigger. This is a much bigger calling. I don't give a damn. I don't give a damn. I don't care. Before going further, I want to send our love and support to all of the people in Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Alabama, and all of the other states who have been really hit hard by that very large hurricane. How was that big one? A very large hurricane this week. We're with you all the way. And if we were there, we'd be helping you and you'll be okay. 39 days from now, we're going to win Michigan. We're going to defeat comrade Kamala Harris, who's a Marxist communist. And quite simply, we are going to make America great again. To make America great. So I didn't want to go off on a tangent, but I did want to bring up a little thing called crime. But we're really here today to talk about bringing jobs and manufacturing back to the great state of Michigan and really to our country, our whole country. And I want to thank, just met him, a great gentleman. He came here, he said, because of me in 2017, from the Netherlands, great, great guy, great successful businessman, Bodewine Hauser. Thank you very much. He's a big guy, too, and his beautiful wife. Stand up, please, please stand up. Good-looking couple. Good-looking. Good man, right? Yes. They're all saying they better say yes. They will. They won't be here tomorrow. If they don't. 
No, he's great. He's done a great job. He actually said he came here because of me. He came to the country because of me, opened this, and it was very successful. And I imagine still is, but he said it's a big difference now between the first days during the Trump administration for four years, three years that you were open during the Trump administration. Now he says the interest rates are way up and inflation has been uh, very devastating, which it is for everybody. But uh, we'll make it even more successful than the first three or four years you had. OK. <laughs> or more successful. And for generations, this state was the beating heart of American industry. And you gave the world General Motors, Ford, Chrysler, Dow Chemical, General Dynamics, and other giants of American industry and might. And then you see what's happened to so many of them because of stupid politicians, largely, and stupid people that ran the companies into the ground. They didn't know what the hell they were doing. It doesn't take much. It only takes one bad executive at the top. But then foolish and corrupt politicians forced Michigan workers to watch as the jobs in the factories were leached from Grand Rapids and Detroit and Lansing and Flint and sent to foreign lands way far away, not only China, China in particular, but all over. But with your vote, we're going to reclaim America's manufacturing power and basically, we're going to do what they do. We have to get the senators to agree. I think we have no problem with that, right? We're going to get the senators to allow us to do it. We're actually allowed to do it as president. We want to make it permanent. We're going to bring jobs, wealth, and pride back to Grand Rapids, back to Detroit, back to Milwaukee, and all throughout the Midwest. We're going to bring it back. And to our incredible auto workers here in Michigan, I'm pinpointing you for greatness. I'm pinpointing you because the industry has been decimated. And right now, as we speak, they're building big plants. They wouldn't do it when I was president. They're building big, giant auto plants in Mexico, owned and financed by China. And they think they're going to come out and they're going to build cars and they're going to sell them into our country and they're going to destroy Michigan and all these other places. Not going to happen because we'll put a hundred to 200 percent tariff on every car coming across the Mexican border. And we'll tell them the only and we're going to be strong. The only way they'll get rid of that tariff is if you build the plant in the United States, not if you build it in Mexico. Which is what China and others do. If Elon wants to sell a car, by the way, Elon Musk gave his total endorsement. Elon, he gave me that greatest, beautiful, most beautiful. He said, we're not going to have a country left if Trump doesn't get it. And you know what I'm going to let Elon do? Unless you people disagree, I'm going to get Elon. And he's great at this. He's going to be our cost cutter. I think he can save trillions, right? He wants to do it so badly. I don't think I can get him full time because he's a little bit busy sending rockets up and all the things he does. But but he's so much into that. He said the waste of this country is crazy and we're going to get Elon Musk to be our cost cutter. He's going to do it for zero. He doesn't want anything. But he wants to see this come this country be great and he'll do it. And having his endorsement is a great endorsement. We have some Really great endorsements, I will tell you that. But we'll get him involved, and mostly on that side of it. And it's going to be incredible what he'll be able to do without hurting anybody. It's just waste. It's waste, fraud, and abuse. Do you ever hear the expression, waste, fraud, and abuse? You get rid of that, everybody lives much better. We have a country that's really strong again. If I'm not elected, you will have no auto industry. Your industry is being taken from you like candy from a baby. I see it happening with the all electric. And I'll tell you, electric cars are wonderful, but not for everybody. I will end the mandate on day one for all electric cars. And there's a great place and they have a place like Tesla and others, are, they're fantastic, but they have a place, but not for everybody. They don't go far, they cost more, 
And they're made in China mostly because that's where they have the materials. We have something that's even better. We have a thing called liquid gold under our feet. And we're going to use our liquid gold in the form of gasoline for our cars. Oil and gas. We have liquid gold. We have more liquid gold than any country anywhere in the world. We have more liquid gold, not even close. We have more than Russia. We have more than Saudi Arabia. We have more than anybody. You know, I approved something, Anwar. I got it done. Ronald Reagan couldn't get it done. I love Ronald Reagan, but he couldn't get it done. He tried so hard. It's in Alaska. It's one of the biggest finds maybe ever, maybe as big as Saudi Arabia. Nobody really knows, but it's in that category. One of the biggest in the world. I got it done. I worked my ass off and I got it done. And Biden came in. He didn't know what the hell he was signing anyway. And he terminated it. Can you believe this? This would have taken care of all of Asia, would have brought money in. We could have paid down our debt. We could have been unbelievable. We would have reduced. I gave you the biggest tax cuts in history. I would have given you a bigger tax cut. And we still will. <laughs> Biden rejected it. They ended it in his first day in office, but we'll get it done quickly. It was already passed by Congress. They didn't do that. They just ended it. And the people of Alaska aren't happy, but that's a national thing. And when you get into those numbers, that's national. Would have been so great for our country, but we'll get it done very quickly. Under my plan, American workers will no longer be worried about losing your jobs to foreign nations. Foreign nations will be worried about losing their jobs to America because we're going to take a lot of those companies back, a lot of new companies coming in. I want German car companies to be American car companies. I want them to build their cars in this country, not in Germany. I want Asian electronics companies to become Michigan electronics companies. And I want every manufacturer that has left us to be filled with regret. And you're going to become racing back after we do what we're doing. And here is the deal that I'll be offering every major company and manufacturer all over the earth, and they're going to all come in because we're the pot of gold. But we're not going to be the pot of gold forever if we don't be careful. We're not going to be. It's going to end, and we're not going to let it end. We will give you the lowest taxes, the lowest energy costs, because we have the energy, the lowest regulatory burden. I cut regulations more than any other president in the history of our country. And we'll give you free access to the biggest and best market on the planet. That's us. But only if you make your product here in America and hire American workers. If you don't make your product here, then you will have to pay a tax or tariff when you send your product into the United States. And we will take in hundreds of billions of dollars into our treasury and use that money to benefit the American citizens. So with China, as an example, I took in hundreds of billions of dollars in taxes and tariffs. No other president took in 10 cents. In fact, they left it on because they can't get it off because it's taken in so much money that the Biden people, I'm sure he doesn't know about it too much, but the Biden people said, we can't get rid of these tariffs. They're making too much money. And but what they're also doing, may, maybe more importantly, their cars aren't coming in and they're not destroying Detroit and South Carolina and North Carolina and Georgia and all the other places that are involved with making autos and parts. They're not coming in and we're making a, we made a fortune on it. And now all we're doing is take interest in the, we were ready to do that. And then we had a little less strange election result. I'm not going to let that happen again. In my first term, I ended NAFTA, the worst trade deal ever made, and replaced it with the USMCA, the best trade deal ever made. I withdrew from the job-killing Trans-Pacific Partnership. By the way, if that deal would have been approved, it was negotiated by Barack Hussein Obama. Have you heard of him, Barack Hussein? Remember Rush Limbaugh? Rush, we love Rush. He used to go, Barack Hussein Obama. Uh, Mr. Wall, would you please stand up? Look at this guy. I got to get a suit like that. He 
He's a successful guy. He's been to 293 rallies. This isn't a rally. This is a workers meeting talking about bringing our jobs back into the country, which will go so fast. But he's been great. Have I done a good job? Yes. You better say yes. That's it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Great. Great. Great guy. I renegotiated Barack Obama's Korea trade deal, which was a disaster to restore the protective tariff on foreign pickup trucks. You know, the pickup trucks is where the car companies make most of their money because we put on a tariff and we kept the tariff and therefore they can't compete with us in our country. And we actually make pickup trucks in this country. If that would have gone, called the chicken wire tax, if that would have gone out, uh, you would not have any trucks being made in this country. I stood up to China like never before, placing a 27.5% tariff on all Chinese automobiles, saving the U.S. auto industry from total obliteration. The cars don't come in because they can't compete. And for furniture makers in North Carolina and other places, and in particular right now, a place called Grand Rapids. You know, I have great memories of Grand Rapids because I came to Grand Rapids, I made a speech, I went home, and we ended up winning the election in 2016. Right? But I put a 22% tariff on Chinese furniture. They were destroying North Carolina. They were destroying your furniture areas where you have a lot. And just absolutely destroying. And you make better furniture, by the way. I bought a lot of furniture. I'd go to here. I'd go down to uh, one with hotels. As I built hotels, I'd buy furniture. I'd go do it myself. People don't believe me. Are you really buying furniture? Yeah, I'm buying furniture, a lot of it. But I'd go and we, it was like North Carolina was the furniture capital of the world. And then it was decimated by China because politicians allowed that to happen. It should have never been allowed to happen. We're going to bring all those companies back and then we're putting a tariff on China with selling their furniture here so that these people can make their furniture. They're better than anyone else. I bought some of that Chinese furniture and people would sit down in a chair and the chair would break and they'd end up on their ass and then they'd sue me. I never had that with North Carolina. I never had it with Grand Rapids. No, it's true. This was not good. Ladies and gentlemen, the finest hotel in the world, they open, they end up getting a little damaged. They sit down to dinner at the beautiful dining table and they end up getting damaged. Sir, you have a problem, the chairs break. That's a big problem. The centerpiece of my plan for a manufacturing renaissance will be a 15% made in America tax rate. So, pretty simple. So listen to how simple it is and how good it will be. It'll totally turn our country around and will be a profit-making machine instead of a disaster like we are right now with $36 trillion in debt. So I brought the business tax rate from 39% or higher down to 30 to 21%. So I had it, it was 39, but it was actually 50 and over 50 if you include uh, state and city taxes in some places, like hopefully New York is going to be able to reduce their taxes. But it was very high. So I brought it down from 39% down to 21%, all the way down to 21%. People said there's no way, and I got it approved by Congress. Can you believe that? Now they're trying to, Democrats want to raise it, and they don't know. It's hard to say we want to, would you please vote for me to raise the tax? They're going to raise it up to 39 or 40% or maybe even 50%. You better not let these people get in office. They're going to destroy what we built. And we did more business and created more jobs than ever before in history. With a 21% rate as opposed to a 39% rate, we took in more money, much more money, at the lower rate than we did because we had jobs like never before. We had business like never before. Maybe you came here because of that. That might be the reason, come to think of it. Thank you. You told me that. 2017, yeah, you probably came because of the tax and the one-year depreciation. And you buy something and you can depreciate, oh, you are a smart one. 
You're a smart one. Come to think of it, I would imagine that's why. And we're doing that again, the one year to appreciate. You buy equipment and you're allowed to write it off uh, first year. But what it does is create tremendous jobs. But now I'm doing a step further. I'm going to bring down the 21 percent to 15 percent, but only and we will be the most competitive in in the world. Don't forget the world like a gentleman like this can take his company and go to the Netherlands and go to a lot of other places. They all want your business. So if you start charging them too much, you're going to leave. They're going to say that's a nice plan to bye bye because they ultimately they're great business people. And they're going to go where they can get the deal. 15% will be almost as low as there is in the world. And yet, you got to remember, only if you manufacture your product right here in the USA do you get the 15% rate. So how cool is that? <laughs> Michigan will be hotter than it was ever was in its heyday. It'll be hotter than it ever was. You have to manufacture the product. Otherwise, you stay at 21%, which is okay, too. But if you manufacture your product here, you drop all the way down to 15%, making it just about as compelling as there is in the world. Some are a little bit lower, but it's not this country. But it'll be among the most competitive in the world. Then I'm imposing tariffs on your competition from foreign countries, which would come in and take your businesses as soon as you built them. And we're going to put tariffs on, so now you won't be able to worry about having somebody come in and steal your plant and steal your business and close your place and lose your workers, and the workers are out of jobs. All your car factories are going to be coming back. You'll have more jobs than you've ever had in this state. Your car industry will be as big relatively as it was 60 years ago when you were like dominant. It's not dominant anymore. This is why people in countries are all after Trump. This is why, you know, the only one that has shots fired at them that throbbing feeling, right? The only one are consequential. I do these things. I've got a lot out there. I've got a lot of enemies. Germany liked, as an example, Barack Hussein Obama better than me, even though the people actually like me much better. Because you know what? He didn't charge him anything. He let him rip off our country. All presidents let our country be ripped off, and that's why we're in the mess that we're in. But me, no. But that's why. I have, to put it mildly, in particular, Iran, you know, don't forget, with Iran, they were the sponsor of terror, like nobody else was the sponsor of terror, and they were broke under the Trump administration, because I put all sorts of sanctions on, I put all sorts of countries couldn't buy their oil, or they couldn't do business in the United States, and all I wanted was one thing. One thing, because I wasn't looking to hurt them. I know many Iranian people, they're great people, very smart people, but I didn't want them to have a nuclear weapon. They can't have a nuclear weapon. Very simple ask. You can do whatever you want. You're going to be strong. You're going to get big and beautiful. Can't have a nuclear weapon and destroy the world. Can't have it. You can't have a nuclear weapon. The power of nuclear is so monumental. It's, uh, you just can't let that happen. And it wasn't going to happen. And there was no Hezbollah that was getting money. They had no money. Hamas had no money. The terror groups, 28 different terror groups, had no money. Nobody had any money. And during the four years of the Trump administration, we had no terror. We had no wars against other countries, expensive, never-ending, stupid wars like we had under other presidents. I won't say which one. Including, including Republicans, including Republican presidents, right? Goes in, blows out the Middle East, blows up the Middle East, comes back, you get nothing except death. You get death all over the place, death and hatred. Actually, they should like me more than any, anybody ever, but you had no wars under Trump except I defeated ISIS, which had already begun. I defeated ISIS, took 100% of the ISIS caliphate, 100%. I was told it was going to take five years. 
I did it in four weeks. We have the greatest military in the world, but you have to understand, you can't be so politically correct. But we did it in four weeks. ISIS was gone. 100 percent of the ISIS caliphate. And some of you have had the story, but I don't have enough time to tell you the story because I have to be someplace else making the same damn speech in a little while. I'll tell you the story the next time. I promise. I'll tell you the story, Mike, the next time. Will you come up here, Mr. Senator? Come up here real fast. Come on. I got to get you up. This is a man who's going to be the, one of the best senators, toughest senator, and great for you. And I hear your poll numbers are looking good. Will you say a quick hello so I don't have to go through this process in 15 minutes? Yes, sir, Mr. President. Well, thank you, Mr. President, for being here. How about that? And I can tell you, I'm looking at his teleprompter. He's not even close to watching that teleprompter. But I, <laughs> I want to tell you this, Mr. President, one thing we know here in Michigan, with your plans to make sure that border is secure, with your plans to make sure the tax rate allows us to be competitive, with your plan to make energy independent here in America and bring down our gas prices and our cost of groceries, these folks right here were ahead of you. There is more common sense on that dais than there is in every committee room back in Washington, D.C. <laughs> and I'll give you a little, we had some hot off the press information yesterday, Mr. President. 5,000 auto dealers. Your opponent, Kamala Harris, has been saying it really wasn't an EV mandate. 5,000 auto dealers who are feeling the heat from this EV mandate said, nope. You're killing our business. You're killing the automobile industry. You must end the EV mandate. With you in Washington, we're going to get that done. Thanks for being here, Mr. President. He's doing great. You got to vote for him. He's doing great. And Tudor, thank you very much. Great job. You did a great job this morning on television. I appreciate it very much. Nice things. Tudor Dixon, everybody. Thank you very much. But if Kamala Harris gets in, every single manufacturing job in this state is going to Mexico or going to China. And Mexico is a very big threat, by the way. First of all, the tax queen, that's Kamala, is demanding a 33 percent tax hike on all domestic production, way up. It's going to be much higher than that, by the way. Next, she wants the largest capital gains tax in the history of our country. And then she's promising a brand new wealth confiscation tax called un realized capital gain. That means uh, if you that means that if your company's doing great and your company's gotten really valuable, but you might be a little tight on cash and you have no intention of selling your company, you do an appraisal of what your company is worth and you have to pay a tax on it. So now you go to a bank and you borrow the money and your company goes out of business and that's the end of your company. Can you imagine that unrealized Unrealized. In other words, you don't sell. Your company got more valuable and you're putting more and more money into your company and that's okay. There are a lot of people who have great wealth and they don't have cash. Those people are wiped out and it'll cause a depression like in 1929. Other than that, I think it's quite a good idea. <laughs> crazy. This person is crazy. You know, her father is a Marxist professor of economics. That's what she is. She's a Marxist. And we are not ready for a Marxist, and we will never be ready for a Marxist or a communist president, which is what she is. And, you know, we're leading in the polls. We're doing great. But, you know, when you see we're leading by two points, three points, five, we should be leading by 50 points. Six, and we should be. How the hell? No, really, you would really say, why would anybody vote for her? She's destroying our country. What she did outside of the nuclear disaster that these people will get us into, World War III, what she did on the border with these millions of murderers and criminals coming into our country, what she did on the border is, is the worst thing I think I've ever heard. I've never heard of anything like it. Never made sense. You're trying to figure out, you know, in business, you always like to figure out your opponent. What does he want? What are they doing? What does she want? 
what are, what are they doing? And you want to figure it out. Here, you can't figure it out. Like, why do they want open borders? Why do they want men playing in women's sports? Why does Kamala want to give transgender operations to convicted illegal migrants coming in and staying in detention cells? She said, we will give them sex change operations. Now, somebody would look at me and say, that's crazy. I'm sure that that's not true. No, no, it's 100 percent true. She wants to, wanted to, wants to give them. They're in a detention cell and a man wants to transition into womanhood. And she is willing to do that and give very expensive operations, by the way, hundreds of thousands of dollars. But if you want that, she will give you a transgender operation. Are we crazy? Are we crazy? Now, how about, and, and also, all of these people, she wants to defund the police. You know, she is one of the originals for defund the police. I say anybody that wants to defund the police is not qualified and shouldn't be allowed to even run for president of the United States. It's crazy. Comrade Kamala Harris also voted for a bill to impose a 100 percent ban on gas powered cars and trucks, killing an estimated 200,000 U.S. auto jobs, including 40,000 auto jobs in Michigan, a death sentence for the Michigan economy. On day one, I will terminate Kamala's electric vehicle mandate. Have to terminate it. And remember, the electric car has a great place, but not for everybody. Okay? Not for everybody. No state in America will be permitted to ban gasoline engines. You want gasoline? Nice, clean gasoline. We have the best. We have the most. You know, we, we want to use something that China has that we don't. It's crazy, right? We, they have they have certain minerals. They have control of what you need for the batteries. And we really don't, but we will have. A lot of what we have is stopped because of the environment. We have the minerals, but we don't have the environmental impact statements. But we'll make sure that that's going to go very quickly. We'll be able to do things that you never even thought. The only good thing about what happened with this four-year disaster is that the people will understand when we fix our country, they'll be much more understanding than they would have been if we just went straight ahead and did it because this country has never been laughed at like a bunch of dopes. It's never been laughed at like it is right now. If Kamala wins, she will take your cars, take your money, take your guns. She wants to confiscate all guns, you know that. She just changed. That's one of the 15 policies that she changed. You know, she was totally in favor of taking everybody's confiscating your gun. She changed that when she looked at some polls. <laughs> the polls weren't looking too good. But they always revert back. Remember, she wants to take your economic opportunity and she will absolutely kill the American dream for your children. You know, this country used to be about the American dream. They don't talk about that. They talked about it four years ago like never before. And they'll talk about it after November 5th. They're going to talk about the American dream. If I win, we will bring back the American dream bigger, better and stronger than ever before. So we're pleased to be joined with a few people. You just met Mike Rogers, and I wanted to have him up here separately because I will tell you, this guy is going to be a great senator. I picked him, even though he wasn't always particularly nice to me. He was paid a lot of money to say bad things about me, and that's okay. I fully understand it. But he's been great, and he's got great gravitas and I think he might even be leading in the poll by a little bit he's tough as hell and he's good and he's got the whole deal going and I had a lot of choices I had choices of people that were lovely to me so light, so nice but I I wanted to pick somebody that could be number one a great senator number two could win and I just want to thank you you've been really working hard and uh, I appreciate it and I appreciate Tudor Dixon very much also 